Hello and welcome back. My name is Colin and apologies at the jump for this taking so long. It has been a bananas Q4. This is going to be a pretty quick video because installing the Appstra server is a pretty quick process. So let's get right into it. I've already downloaded the Appstra version that I want. If you don't have an image already, you're going to either have to have an entitlement or you're going to have to talk to a partner or a friend at Juniper to get your hands on the file. If you can get to this page, what we're looking for is the Linux KVM image. And in this case, just grab the latest release. You'll also want to be running at least 4.0.1-56 of EVE-NG. That's where the support for Juniper Abstra AOS was added. This includes the init template for AOS and the folder naming structure so that when you select the node from the dropdown in Eve, you'll actually see AOS. You won't have to pick like a generic Linux box and then put in all your, just, just do that. Just upgrade to the right version. It'll save you a lot of headaches. In the interest of time, I've already downloaded the file. Like I said, we're going to unpack it. We're going to create the AOS folder on the Eve server, and then we'll move that file that we get out of the gzip into that folder and give it the correct name. Start with unzipping. And while we're waiting for that, oh, I can tell you about this fix.sh. If you've used Eve at all, you know that there is this fix permissions command you've got to run basically after any file system change. I just made a script out of it. I recommend if you use Eve, you do the same because it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Uh, for you to run that uh, fix permissions command, mostly because you don't have to remember it. All right, that's unpacked. Now we do need to give our file a particular name. In this case, it's going to be hda.qcal2. Let's make our folder first, slash, alt, slash, I always forget, netlab, there we go, add-ons. This is the folder location for the images. I'm going to name this AOS. That is the bit that is important. Uh, that maps to the template that is in this version of Eve. And then after that, the versioning is just whatever you want to make it. So I'll make it match the version I'm using. And now I will move the abstra file that I just unzipped to that location, and I will give it the name that I need it to have in order to work properly, which is hda.qcal2. Now, since we did a file level thing, we're going to run our fixed permissions script. And that will be the sum total of the prep we need to do in the Eve CLI. Everything else we're going to do is going to be in Eve itself. All right, done. So let's jump over to Eve. I'm going to create a new Abstra Lab. It's my old one, it's all turned off, so I'll just create a new one. Abstra 4.0.1, save, and it'll open a blank page. The first thing I'm gonna do is add the interface for my management subnet. You've got some flexibility in how you wanna do this, what I have done is I have a secure router that sits at the head end of my network. I have an interface that's coming off of that router that has a lab net, and I've got a whole chart of lab nets that I have to use in my lab. In this case, I'm going to be using a subnet called LabNet20, which is 10.0.20.0/24. I use it in the other lab. It just makes it easier for me to reuse it. The first device that I add is a bridge to the Cloud3 interface which maps to a physical port on my EVNG bare metal server. Essentially, I'm just connecting, oh, wrong one, uh, connecting that subnet off of my secure router into my EVNG network so that I can route to it from my home network. And that is very useful because you're gonna spend a lot of time in the abstract GUI. It's much easier to do that natively in a browser on your computer than to go into Eve and run it through a virtual desktop within the Eve server. All right, I've got LabNet 20 set. Now we're going to add the AOS server. Make sure I got the right version. I do bump up the memory. I know from experience that eight gig is not enough for the size of the lab that we are building. 
everything else here should check out. Now, I have a note to modify the MAC address. This is just a shortcut for me. I'm, since I'm using the same LabNet subnet, I'm going to use the same DHCP assignments wherever I can, which means me setting the MAC of the devices I create so they match the MAC addresses in the other lab that I have that's turned off right now. That'll just save me a little bit of time. Hopefully, maybe it won't. <laughs> Hopefully it does. All right, only one ethernet here. Yeah, and you can add two ethernets if you wanna manage this a different way. I just found this to be the easiest way for me. Not much else to it. We'll start this up. It doesn't take very long to boot, so I would normally fast forward or pause here, but I'm just actually going to wait. We have a few steps we're going to take, and then the server's up. It's funny, if you talk to Appster folks about HA, there is clustering support for AOS, but what they traditionally have suggested people do is just regular backups, and if they have a problem with their AOS server, to spin up another one and then load the backups into that new server, which sounds on its face pretty nutso. Honestly, it just takes no time to bring these servers up, so it's not actually all that wild. Login here is admin admin. We do want to change the default password. It is, it's not as easy as admin. Uh, you have to make it 14 characters long. You have to do capital letter and number and all that. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use let's see, admin and I'm going to use live the dream. You can see that down here. Let's see if I screwed it up by jumping over. Oh, nope, good. Great. Yeah, start the AOS service. I'll take this in again. The underscore the dr34m. The next step is going to be to... S Actually, I'm not going to set a password for the web GUI. I like to leave that as admin. Um, I think you can actually also skip doing the local password. Uh, I've just kind of gotten in the habit of changing that. Uh, the web credentials, it's admin by default. Right now I'm waiting. I'm actually going to use the Web UI credentials screen to check the status of the API. It takes a little while to come up. It is coming up though. So oh, it's up right now. Great. You can just go to web credentials and when it gives you, takes you to the next screen to actually change them, you'll know it's up and working. All right, so we're done. Uh, cancel. Uh, if config, and I'm gonna check to make sure I've got the IP address I expect to have. And see that I've got 10.0.20.1, which is the DHCP address I want this box to have, which means I should also be able to get to the web GUI now. Aha, indeed. Now it's complaining because it knows that there's a different SSL cert attached to this new server than the one that this address used to map to. We'll go ahead and accept the risk, which is also another reason I'm using Firefox, because I can tell you right now, Chrome gets pretty grumpy about this. For Abstra, this should be admin and admin. And there we go. We have our server up. Doesn't take long, huh? That's it for this video. Uh, I hopefully can start recording the next couple of videos in the series right away. Uh, the next steps going to be creating our templates. I'll go through the different elements of what the blueprints are. It'll be a little bit of an overview of how this all works, but really I'm just going to focus on building and hopefully as we go along, how all of the elements of Abstra work together to build a fabric will start to make sense within the context of actually building one. I believe the next video is actually planning. So we'll do our network planning and how we're going to build the blueprints so that we have all the raw data we need to then go build those fabrics. Until then, Oh, be well. Take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient. Bye.